So I am Tara from livingonadime.com. Today I am making homemade bug repellent. I am making a homemade bug repellent bar that's like a lotion that you rub on. And then I'm making a homemade bug repellent spray. Both. If you have any questions, please shout them out as Mike is behind the scenes here and he will relay them to me so I can cook and hopefully talk at the same time. So I'm going to start with the bug repellent bars. Now this is basically the same recipe as my homemade lotion bars. And Mike is putting the link up there for you to our homemade bug repellent bars. And this is pretty simple. The ingredients are beeswax, which, whoops, I didn't get this arranged very well here. Okay. Um, beeswax, which I have melting in my pan here. And this is natural, unrefined beeswax. So that's why it's a little cloudy. You can get white pellets, which is what I made this one out of. So this one's clear because I made white pellets. So I have my beeswax in here, melted with a little bit of olive and avocado oil. And I'm putting the rest of my olive and avocado oil in. And then I'm putting in my essential oils. And the key to these is, or to these bug repellents is the essential oils. It's the kinds of essential oils that you use. I got this one on um, Amazon, and this one I purchased with my soap supplies. And um, I have I have it all melted here. So now I'm going to add my essential oils, Oop, just like that. Set this over to the side, and hopefully I won't burn myself. You know, I should keep aloe here in case I burn myself. <laughs> I'll pass it to you. Then, can you see the mold, Mike? Uh, what is the pink one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then you just pour it in, and this one is unre. Oh, I should have got a strainer. Well, anyway. Okay. This one is unrefined. It had a little bits of pieces in there that I should have strained out. And I didn't because I forgot to bring my strainer over to the table. So I'll just pull it out like this. This comes from my cousin's beehive. Um, they are raising bees and they gave me some to try. And I was super excited, of course, to try it because I always like to try things like that. Then you're going to take and set this on the counter for overnight to harden. Uh oh. Keep talking. Oh, we have a production problem. Um, <laughs> thank you, my production crew. Uh, I was just thinking before this that I need to be Martha Stewart and have a team of like 30 people working for me. <laughs> um, you just set this on the counter and let it harden overnight, or you can put it in the refrigerator and it'll harden in a couple of hours. And then when it's done, it's going to turn out like this. Now mine is darker, as I said, because it's unrefined. Then when you want to use it, can you see my arm? Yep. Just take and just rub it all over your skin if you want. You can also just rub it a little bit on your, um, uh, you know, just in strategic places. This is more of a lotion. So if you don't want it all over, we're in Colorado, so we're really dry. So we do rub it all over. And then that's how you make a homemade bug repellent bar. Really simple, three, four ingredients. Just depends on what kind of oils you want to use. Now, I've, now that I've shown you how to make the bar, I'm going to talk a little bit. Let me scoot this out of the way. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the oils before I do the bug repellent spray. Um, you can use several different kinds of oils. Today I have lavender and peppermint. Um, you can use citronella, lemon, clove, eucalyptus, cinnamon are all good essential oils. Basically, it just depends on what you like and what you want to smell like. This is a great natural alternative that doesn't have any chemicals in it. It's the essential oils that you're using. And I do get most of mine just off of Amazon, and there's links in the description below, and there's some links in the 
uh, recipe. If you go to livingonadime.com and type in homemade bug repellent or just bug repellent, you will find the recipe. Mike also put it in the description and in the links for you. Um, the combination that I like the best is citronella, clove, and lemon. I just like the citrusy scents. So that's my preference, but if you like a more cinnamony scent, you could use cinnamon and vanilla extract. I have a recipe that has the vanilla extract. So you could do that. Got questions? Uh, Karen says, where do you get beeswax? The recipe has a link, but it links to olive oil. There's Oops. beeswax, your natural planet beeswax. One time. Um, turn it around, let me see. So I must have misput the wrong, let's see. Scroll down just a little bit. That right there is what I got. This one? No, the next one up. This one? Yeah. Okay. That's the one I got. Can you fix that for her? I'm sorry. I got my beeswax on Amazon. Mike's putting a link there for you. Um, and I prefer the pellets. You can get the bars of bee beeswax, but you have to shave it. And it's really kind of a pain. So I prefer to get pellets because, yeah, it's just a pain <laughs> to have to shave it and all that. So There are some questions. Okay, other questions? Karen says, love your apron. Did your mom make it? <laughs> yes, thank you, Karen. Mom did make my apron for this one. Let's see. Can you see it? Isn't it cute? Yep. So she made that for my birthday, I don't know, three or four years ago. I'm a huge, huge gardener. And so she made that for me. Yes, thank you. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Anita says, do you just rub the bars on you? I guess you already demonstrated that. Yes, Anita, you just rub... You just rub the bar on you just like you would a lotion bar. Kelly says, the best. what's the best place to buy essential oils? Um, I find the cheapest place to be Amazon. So that's where I use. Um, Mike's putting a, a link in there. And that's what this one is from. Um, for the, um, just do the lavender essential oil. Okay. Um, so I prefer Amazon. It's just my choice. You can get more oil for the price. There are other multi-level marketing companies that you can buy them from that tout how great their oils are. They're really not that much. They're really not that much more special. I mean, how do I say that? They're not. They're okay, but they're not worth the price for making something like this. If you want to use them therapeutically, that's fine, but it's not worth it for for making things like soap or lotion bars and that kind of thing. So I just get from Amazon, it's good quality, it works really well, it's 100% pure, so, yeah. Marina asked, can you rub the essential oil directly onto your skin without the beeswax and olive oil? No, do not rub the essential oils directly on your skin. No, 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 no. You will burn your skin, you could cause hives, you could cause all kinds of things. Essential oils are not to be messed with lightly. You have to dilute them in something, and that's what I'm going to show when I make my bug repellent spray here in just a minute as soon as I'm done with the um, with the questions I'm going to show you how to make the bug repellent spray and this would be a better way than doing the lotion bar. Kelly asks how long does the rub on last and Beverly asks how often do you apply it? Um, so I don't know I mean it just kind of depends on how much they're pestering you so probably every two hours or so I would say you know, I haven't really timed it, to be honest. So I would say probably every two hours or so. It just depends on how bad they are. Now, the spray, you can just spritz around on your on your clothing and stuff. And so that helps um, so that you don't have it on your skin. And that's why I like the spray a little bit better, just because the lotion bar can be kind of hot in the summer. If you're in a hot and humid climate, you may not want the oils on your skin. So the spray is a better route. It just depends on which kind of climate you're in. Week three bonsai asks, where did you get the measuring cups? Can I just say we'll put them Oh yeah. Um so I got my measuring cups um on Amazon. I couldn't find the exact same ones, but I have a link in the description below on YouTube where you can go to find them. Um aren't they cute? I love them. <laughs> okay, other questions or um one one lady was asking for you to recap what's going on because she just joined. Kathy says, does it repel only mosquitoes? And Karen asks, will it repel against deer ticks? Okay, um, so if you just joined us, I'm making homemade bug, bug repellent today. 
And um, it, this works for mosquitoes, gnats, flies, and I'm not sure about ticks, honestly. I don't know why it wouldn't work for ticks, but I don't know for sure. So don't take my word on that one. I do know that it helps with gnats and flies. And I was just at the store today. I was at the hardware store today getting stuff to fix my drip irrigation. And a bottle, so this is homemade that we're making today, homemade bug repellent. A bottle that was this big was $7 for natural bug repellent. That is crazy. I will have made this for probably 15 cents for double the amount. So yeah, make your own. It's a whole lot cheaper than buying the natural stuff at the store. Okay, let me get on with my homemade bug repellent now. I've got some questions. If you have more questions, please put them in there in the description below. Okay, so for the homemade bug repellent spray, I um, combine water, and this is distilled water if you keep it a long time. If you use it really fast, like if you're in the woods or going camping and you have six or eight people using it all at once, you don't need distilled water. But if you're going to have it sitting on your counter for six months or a year, use distilled water. And then I have um, my castor oil here. And I have my witch hazel here. Or you could use rubbing alcohol. And I don't have my recipe in front of me. I can't remember what the next thing is. Let's see. What did you put in there, right? I put in the witch hazel and the castor oil and the water. Micro, or cinnamon oil. The oils, yeah. And then eucalyptus oil and citronella oil. Okay, the oils. Was that it? Was the oils? Probably it's on your list here. That's okay. for number one. Oh, I got my, okay, never mind. I got my uh, mixing, mixing, uh, measuring cup uh, mixed up. Okay, so I have my distilled water, witch hazel, and castor oil in here. If you don't have castor oil, you could use glycerin, but this helps it stick to your skin or to your um, body. And then I have my essential oils. And then I just stir. Then I just took an old bug repellent bottle that I have. Now I did buy this and use it so that I would know what was in here because I, we identify this as bug repellent. So if we know this is bug repellent and this is the bug repellent bottle, that to me helps us keep track a little bit better. So I should have got a funnel, but because I wasn't thinking, oh, I got it. Okay. Woohoo. You got to love my steady hand. See, this is why I'm a good painter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mercy. Knock on wood. How did I manage to do that? Didn't spill a drop. Okay. So, um, in this recipe, I added, um, I have a little bit extra because I made a double batch because I have extra um, containers. So then you just take this, and I shake it up. You don't necessarily have to. And then you can just spray it on you or spray it on your clothes. Spray it all over, and you're going to be smelling all fresh and eucalyptus -y or lemony or citronella -y. I have a question. Yes. On the post, you said it's better to spray it on your clothes than on you. Yes. Now, why I think it's better to spray it on your clothes than you? Um, because sometimes people, you don't know how people are going to react to essential oils. So if you keep reapplying it over and over on your skin, essential oils can sometimes cause a rash or um, some people to have an allergic reaction. So I would spray it on your clothes, but you could spray it on your skin. But, you know, I just, that's just my personal preference, so. Anita asks, doesn't it leave oily spots on the clothes? Well, yeah, it probably would. Um, I always have oil on my clothes from other stuff, actually, because I, because I'm always get, I'm always into projects, so I never thought about it. But what I would do is, I guess why I never thought about it for us is because we never, have just our clothes on. We're in Colorado, so usually if we're outside, we've got a jacket on because here at night, it cools down in the summer, and sometimes it can get down to the 50s and be chilly in the summer. And so if we're camping or something, 
we always have a jacket on when the mosquitoes and that kind of thing are out. So yeah, I mean, I would spray it on your skin there if you prefer not to get your clothes all oily, that would make sense. So yeah, I probably would do that. I hadn't thought about it just because we've never had that problem. So any other questions? Well, one person on YouTube said that her computer froze and she missed it. She missed the recipe. Oh, okay. Um, so if you're on YouTube and you missed the recipe, then it's going to be in the description below in a few minutes after this post. So you can go to livingonadime.com and it's bug repellent. And it's right on the front page. Right it's now. right on the front page right now. And if you're watching this later, it'll be on, um, just type in the search on the right hand side of our website and just type in bug repellent. Uh, Jude, Jude B on YouTube says essential oils act differently than regular oils. Your clothes won't be oily, I promise, she said. And I was wondering, why would they? Well, I don't think that's totally true because in my soap making, I have splashed essential oils on myself and gotten some oily residue from essential oils. I don't know. That's a good question. I, re I honestly don't know on that. If anybody else knows and has made or used the homemade bug repellent with the essential oils, I wouldn't think it would be that much though, because you're only putting 30 drops in this huge thing. So I can't imagine it would be that oily because that's what the witch hazel and the castor oil is for. And castor oil does not leave an oily film. So. And Lynette asked if she could use it on her dog. Yeah, you can use it on your dog. If your dog can handle the scents, some dogs cannot handle the strong scents of essential oils. So if your dog can, yes, I would put it like from his shoulders back to his tail and not on his head in case you haven't ever tried it before. But yeah, is that it? Okay. Alrighty. So I hope you enjoyed how to make homemade bug repellent today. Um, I'm going live a little bit later. I'm going to be making some soap, some unscented soap with cream um, in, I don't know, an hour or so. Are we doing the homemade dinner live? Okay, so I'm just coming back to do soap in about an hour or so. Um, maybe Mike says an hour and a half. We'll see how fast we can get it done. Um, please go to livingonadime.com, like, share, subscribe. Please, we're almost to 30,000 subscribers. And if you subscribe, we're doing a giveaway for all of our subscribers when we hit 30,000 on YouTube. So go subscribe because we're almost there. We've only got like 400 and something left before we hit 30,000. And if you subscribe, you may win a cool prize. So, all right, guys, that's it. Have a good night and we'll see you in an hour and a half or so.